Hello. Today I'm going to illustrate how we can uh, implement fuzzy controllers uh, using MATLAB. And I will illustrate this by considering an example. Here we have a transfer function and we are going to design conventional controller to meet certain specifications in terms of settling time and phase margin. I will design the controller using MATLAB. My preferred way is to use uh, root uh, locus. And after we have the controller, we will implement it uh, using fuzzy controller. Now, I'm using MATLAB and all what I did is to define the transfer function and to launch CISO tool. Why? Because my preferred approach to design controllers, conventional controllers, is to use the root locus. And here we have the root locus as you changed again. You can see here you have the time response, the step response, the time domain. And here changed again the poles move on the root locus and you can see that the response changes. I am interested in the uh, settling time. We aim to design the simplest controller and of course we can start by changing the gain because it would be simplest controller we can use. However, instead of just trying to change the gain, we can add to the root locus the design requirements and it's new and the settling time of 0.5 and then it will show us where the poles should be. So the poles should be on this line. Obviously that means these lines will have to bend somehow this way so they intersect the line which meets the specification. This can only happen by adding something to the root locus that will pull the branches to the left. And that, of course, is the effect of adding a zero. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a zero somewhere here. And just to move it, you can see the indeed the branches of the root locus bending, bending too much. I won't need to change that. It's a combination between changing the gain and changing the location of the zero. So um, if I change the gain there, let's see, now they're intersecting the line. And you can see, well, actually it's quite, quite a good attempt. The, you can see the settling time is about 0.5 of a second and the phase margin is uh, uh, 50.9. If I look at the compensator here, the compensator, it has the gain of 14 point something and the real zero at minus 48. I'll make that minus 50. So just to make it round numbers when I am designing the fuzzy controller and I'll make this 14. So that's my controller and look at the response. Yes, it's meeting the specification here and also the phase margin is 50.4 degrees. That's fine. So that's how is now is our controller. Now we can take these values and start designing the fuzzy controller. This is the controller. If we are implementing it using Simulink, we will have the first derivative multiplied by TD, and then this is the uh, constant K. So that's the gain. If we implement it using fuzzy logic, this will be a system architecture. So obviously, this part is not there and the gain is not there. So we need to modify what goes here to account for this KC and this uh, TD. How do we do that? If you remember, in the fuzzy controllers part two, 
we considered the lookup table like this. And uh, here we have our errors. The error E is, has a unit gain. So we have the limits from minus one to one. But the derivative of the error has a gain of TD. So to take this into account, we modify the membership function of the derivative by 1 over td. So in this case, for example, 1 over td is 1 over 0 0.02, which will be 50. So this will be minus 50, and this will be 50. The second thing is, in our previous discussion about fuzzy logics, we used minus 1 for negative and minus two for large negative. These values has to be modified to include this constant because this constant we add it here, but we cannot add it there. So we will have to include it in the fuzzy block. So our lookup table will be modified taking the gain into account. So the membership function in a, in a minute, I'm going to uh, switch to the MATLAB implementation and we'll, we'll launch MATLAB and follow these steps. But what we will get is we will have two input, E and DE by DT. Then we define membership function. These are similar, minus one, one, yes, that's the zero and so on. This is the positive and the, the negative. For the derivative of the errors from minus 50 to 50 in this particular case, because we found that TD is 0.02. So we modify the membership functions to start from minus 50 to 50. Then we have the lookup table. And instead of having 0, minus 1, 1, we have now, and this was minus 1. It became minus 14, minus 2, minus 28. 2 became 28. We have here uh, five values. 0, minus 14, minus 28, 14, and 28. So remember that for the implementation, we will need to define these values. Then the rule base. If the error, we look at this table, if the error is negative and the derivative of the error is negative, we have minus 28. We will call this large negative. If the error was negative and DE by DT is zero, then we get minus 14. We'll call that negative or small negative and so on. You can go and define your rule base. So these are the rules for the rule editor. Then that's here. I have the membership function, then the plots of the membership function, then you look at the output implementation simulink. This is the conventional controller implementation. This is the transfer function, G. And here is the fuzzy controller implementation. And you get identical characteristics. Now I'm going to go step by step through the MATLAB implementation. Now I just launched the fuzzy toolbox and this window appears and I wanted a new Sagino. Why? Because that's what will allow us to define our rule base according to the table we discussed in earlier parts of the presentations. I need another, to add another variable. So I will add as an input, add variable and input variable. This one, I will call it the error E and this input two, I will call it D E I D T. If you click there, you can see the membership functions. I don't really need any of these and you can edit them. The easiest way is to remove all membership functions and then add, we need to add three. So we add three membership functions. Okay. You know, this, if you look at the presentation part, the PowerPoint, this we called it the zero for the error, we call it Z. And this was between, 
we need it to go from minus 1 and 1. So that's z minus 1 and 1. This membership function, that was our negative for the error, n. And it was from 0 to 1. Yes, that's actually correct. And here it's minus 2, minus 1, 0. Yes. The third membership function, that's the positive and the error, we call it P. And it is correct for minus 1. Yeah, that's fine. Now we need to add the membership functions for the derivatives of the error. And here I'm going to delete them all and add three of them. Now I wanted to edit them, but note that the editor went to the error. I'm um, actually, this is okay. I wanted to edit this. And the derivative of the error for was from minus 50. That's 1 over the derivative time to 50. And we go there and we call this was the 0 of the derivative. This was the negative. And it was zero, yes, that's the right shape. And this one was the positive membership function. So we have our membership functions for both inputs. That's for the error, minus one to one. Derivative of the error, minus 50 to 50. Why minus 50 to 50? Because that's what we got from the controller. Next we need to define the output. If you remember, the table had values of 0, 14, 28, minus 14, minus 28. That's five values. So I can actually start by editing. The first one here, I will call it uh, large negative. Large negative was minus 28. This one I will call it negative, and just negative was minus 14. This one will call it the zero, and that's zero. Then I need to add two more, so edit, add membership functions, only two, okay. And that's membership function number four. That will be the positive, which is 14. And the large positive, which was 28. So minus 28, minus 14, 0, 14 and 28. This corresponds to the values of the table. Now we need to add our rules. The rules, if the error is negative and derivative of the error is negative, then the output is large negative. Large negative, which we defined in previous step as minus 28. I will add this rule. If the error is negative and the derivative is zero, the output will be minus 14, we we'll call that negative. Negative error, positive derivative of error, the output will be zero. You can check this against the table. If the error is zero, the derivative is negative, the output will be negative. If the error is zero, the derivative is zero, the output will be zero, add rule, zero positive will be positive, positive negative will give zero, positive zero will give just positive, 
positive positive will give large positive. If you count this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, we had the table, lookup table, was three by three, so it has nine possibilities. And these nine possibilities are now translated into rules. Close that. I can, as a check, I can look at the rules. You can look at the control surface. And we know that the control surface for this particular case will be linear, looks linear. If you made a mistake in the implementation, the control surface is not going to be linear. Then you know that it's not quite right.